Hi there. It's Dr. Shauna Aishans, and I have done a fair amount of education, as is our whole office, on fevers. Yet this week, just on our on-call phone, I've had three calls from parents specifically about fevers. So I wanted to give a little more education. And if you find this helpful, please share with your friends because there is so much misinformation about fevers in our society. And I would really love for people to better understand fevers and have them be less misunderstood. So this video is going to be about the benefits, the concerns, and the myths about fever, fevers. So what could possibly be a benefit of a fever? Believe it or not, it is actually our body's innate way of telling us, hey, pay attention to me, something's going on. It may not come with other symptoms. So there's something brewing. It can be a virus, bacterial infection, um, and so you want to find out the cause, but sometimes you don't know the cause. So it's your body's way of alarming you. Pay attention to me. Rest. Stay hydrated. It's okay to fast when you're sick. That's actually the best thing to do to let your body heal. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing is it cooks the critters or the microbes. Good morning, Jamie. And believe it or not, the ideal temp to heal and cook those critters is around 102, 102. So... Uh, take comfort if your fever happens to be around 102 let it ride let it kill the critters and that's the body's way of um, fighting off the microbes so those are just a few of the benefits some of the concerns of fevers include things like dehydration so think about it if our internal thermostat is rising and people aren't as hungry or thirsty they may get dehydrated very easily this is something especially to be aware of in seniors and pediatric patients and uh, so being sure, um, checking diapers, making sure they're, they're wet. Don't worry about bowel movements as much as urination. So you wanna make sure they're still urinating and staying plenty hydrated. Water, of course, is great. Otherwise, there's some safe and effective electrolytes. Things like low salt, L-O-S-A-L-T, has um, a good comprehensive panel for electrolytes. Pedialyte, there's there's some that are better than others. You wanna get the ones without the artificial dyes and colors. I don't recommend things like Gatorade or um, Powerade is another one because they have things like high fructose corn syrup, artificial sugars, artificial dyes. So there's things that we can do better, but even water, stay hydrated. Another concern to look for is lethargy. So of course, especially if you've ever been holding a child or been around a child with a fever, you know they're not themselves. They're usually more lethargic, may just wanna sit around and snuggle or watch TV. That is normal and that's not to be concerned about. But if you notice that your child is completely lethargic, they're unable to walk, they're unable to do basic things. If they're just kind of dreary and completely out of it, that's more of a concern. If it's a baby and the fontanelles, you notice um, in the head, if they're sunken or if people are dehydrated, you can do this. And if it stays tented or up, um, that's a sign of dehydration. So there's a few things you can look for there. But lethargy is a concern or if a fever is lingering. It's not uncommon for fevers to undulate and go up and down, especially with viral infections. But if a fever hangs around for more than three days, and the person isn't showing any signs of um, healing, that's, that can be a concern. And I'm not saying to be negligent, I'm not saying that fevers should never be addressed. They absolutely should, so, so reach out to a physician that you, you trust. We treat a lot of pediatrics, we treat people of all ages, um, and fevers are a big concern for people. So there's, there's a protocol that we use that's very safe and effective. It does not suppress fevers, but it helps process them faster. It helps people feel better faster. And like I said, it's safe and effective. So ask us more about that. Some myths about fevers. You may have heard that, oh, it's so scary if a fever gets high. If it's 105, that's very traumatic and you're gonna cook your brain or have brain damage. If you know anybody that this has happened to, if you have any research to show that that is such a thing, please post it below or please email us, call us, because I and um, none of the other physicians here have found that, that evidence or research. So the body has an amazing way of healing itself. It's not setting itself up for failure and to cause its own brain damage. So obviously if it's something like meningitis and that is the cause of the fever, that needs to be addressed and the person needs to be seen for a thorough evaluation and treatment. 
but fevers are not bad. They do not need to be suppressed. Please, if you take nothing else from this video, please, please, please know that antipyretics or fever reducers are not the way to go. Things like Tylenol, which depletes glutathione, is very hard on your liver. Things like uh, NSAIDs, ibuprofen, aspirin, please avoid using those. There's a time and a place for them, but when it's a basic fever for a viral or bacterial illness, um, that's not the time and place. In fact, it, it basically messes up your internal thermostat or your hypothalamus. It delays healing. So if you want to stay sick longer, then yes, take a fever reducer. If you want to avoid cooking the critters faster, then yes, take a fever reducer. And it's more so parents often do it to, to keep their child comfortable. But to me, it's more painful to watch somebody struggle for days versus letting them just process the fever, knock it out, and then break it and heal. Um, one other thing is that people focus so much on the temperature and they think the higher it is, the worse it is. That's actually a myth as well. Yes, if somebody's having, let's say they have 105 degree fever for three days, yes, please reach out to us or another physician that you trust. But if it's 105, they may be processing it really quickly and they're going to break that fever really quickly. So that's okay. Um, I've had some patients who have chronic illness and they run... 99.5 to 100.5 fevers for months. That's way more concerning and it's a low fever. So please don't let the numbers scare you. Um, there's lots of things we can do to help you or your children process fevers. So if you have specific questions, please reach out to us. Otherwise, if um, you have any comments that you'd like to share or questions addressed about fevers, please comment below. And if you have friends who are using fever reducers or want some other safe and effective ways to help process fevers during this season and beyond, uh, please share this with them. Have a great one. Bye-bye.